In this episode, we venture further than we've ever been before, traveling across three separate states and one of the world's largest deserts of longitudinal dunes. Welcome to the remote and rugged Simpson Desert. The fourth largest desert in Australia and over 500 kilometers of tough terrain. No water, no fuel, no supply stops and zero help out here. You need to be completely self-sufficient and prepared for any situation. To make things seemingly harder on our already hectic travels, we decided to tow our OP2 camper trailer along behind the GQ patrol. Don't go anywhere as we take you along on this once in a lifetime incredible epic adventure. <laughs> Proudly supported by Ultimate Nine, Tread, Opus Campers, Superior Engineering, and in part by. We're just leaving Birdsville now. We're topped with water, topped with fuel, and heading out towards Big Red. It's about 38 kilometers from town out to Big Red, which I think is the start of the desert. That's where you start the 1100 sand dunes about 500 kilometers all the way over into Mount Dare. Joining us on this Simpson Desert Crossing, we have four vehicles. Myself and Kai in TD42 GQ Patrol, Birdo and Sean in his TD42 GQ Patrol, We've got Demi and her kids in the TB48 GU Patrol, and then we got Dad up the back in the mighty MUX. To get to this point and the start of our Simpson Desert journey, we had traveled four days on the road over 2,000 kilometers from where we live on New South Wales mid-north coast. I didn't film heaps, but the last 24 hours coming into Birdsville, I did film a little bit, show off some of the cool things in the outback there, a little bit of the Batoda Hotel that we stopped at, which was super cool. And then when we came into Birdsville, we spent a little bit of time there checking out the town, grabbed some fuel, grabbed a feed from the bakery, kids played and cooled off at the water park for a while and then we had an awesome sunset camp just outside of town. There is a heap of free camping near Birdsville so you'll definitely be able to find yourself a spot for the night. Alright here we go, Simpson Desert Crossing, first time ever, a little bit nervous, a little bit excited, keen to get out here and see what it's all about. Sand flags are required for the Simpson Desert. Berto's already got his on. We'll chuck all the others on now. Before we left on our trip, we were able to get the MUX a set of the latest and greatest Goodyear tyres. The Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack RTs. A rough terrain tyre that are built to handle the tough off-road and desert conditions while still performing extremely well on-road. Keep an eye out for how they do on the trip. At the bottom of Big Red, mate. Tyler's about to go up there. Camper trailer's on. I think he's a little stressed. I don't think it's going to be too bad. Alright, here we go. Big Red up in the trailer. Nah, maybe I won't crawl it. Extra weight with that trailer. Oh, you in just then, like, second. I'll be high range, second gear, just sort of keeping the power consistent, I reckon. That was third gear low. Try second high, you reckon? Yeah, I'll try second high for sure. A little bit better than that. Second high sorted it out. Play new motor. Loves it, I tell ya. I'm about to go up there. Comes dad, last one up. Easy as. I think Berto's dropped back down. He's gonna try the hard line over the side here. Getting ready to go up number two line, big red. <laughs> Was 
that two wheel? <laughs> it was in two wheel drive, four wheel drive would help. So we didn't quite make it two wheel, I put it in four wheel. That's it, right at the top of Big Red, there's the Simpson Desert out behind me. 1100 sand dunes as we cross that way, it's just going to be up, down, up, down, up, down. Oh, should be good. Let's get into it. I chucked the lockers in too, I was unlocked then. Oh yeah, definitely, that'll make a big difference. Pretty much two wheel drive with no lockers in. Yeah, look, I kind of forgot to be honest. Looks like he's got it this time. She's only just cruising up there. She might have it, but nice and light, no camp trailer. That second June there is a little bit interesting too. Had to floor it second gear high, both lockers in. I've aired down, I'm running 10 in the front, 15 in the rear, but I may drop a bit more. I've got plenty more there to play with if it gets difficult. Check that big salt flat over to the left. That's number one salt flat out of uh, probably 499,000. Yeah, and that's probably, probably number five hill out of 1,100, yeah, whatever. Number five sand dune. Number five. Oh, far out. You're sneezing, mate. Brother, I had to start off the ball. Look at him, mate. He's, oh, he's second gear, mate. Pin. Pin, brother. He's, he's up. That's fully up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that that's, a, that's a big hole. Mate, that open there is putting in work. Open mate. Mate. Putting in work. Demi's up, let's see, let's see. Dem, Demi's up. Oh, oh, oh. She's into it. There's a flag on it, eh? Yeah, the flag is... <laughs> psh, 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 mate. Oh, look at that. Sappy gear working, mate. Oh. Zeph's definitely out of his baby's chair, mate. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, those tyres travelling on this sand, Gary? Yeah, I haven't felt a wheel spin yet. Like, I can beat a part crawl. Listen to that, mate. It sounds like the tip-top new, the new thing, then. Cruising through this desert. It's, 12, pretty, it's pretty green at the moment. There's been a lot of water around. No, I don't think it's normally all, all bushy and green like this. 43 k's out of town. Just, just putting along. Just putting along, mate. I think we're trying to get 125 ish k's per day. So, so, so we can get out of here in four days. We're coming down to the creek. Lake Air Creek, still got water in it. Yeah, she's pretty looks full, pretty looks nice. pretty, mate. If you can see the other side, it's bloody green as. We've just gone from red to, to green real quick. About 20 k's past Big Red, and we've hit this Air Creek, which is absolutely full of water. Now, uh, there's a detour around it. You gotta head up along the creek, cross it further up where it's easier, then come back down and meet up with it on the other side. It's just a bit of a loop around. But we're gonna have a suss of this main line anyway, just since we're here, see what it's like. You going for a walk, Bert? How's this water in the middle of the desert? Literally. Ain't different no scenery, desert. Mate. Different scenery. Yeah, it's got it all out here. What's your thoughts on it after walking it? I can nose into here and see how slippery that bit is.
Yeah. It's pretty soft. We had to go nudge into uh, Ayers Creek, bit of water, that waist deep on me, a bit soft. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel like swimming. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> he might have to winch himself out the other side. So the situation is we got Berto across, he had to winch up out that other side there, he just got caught on the exit. But before we all started going across, there's a couple of other guys here and they suggested we send the drone up because they think this creek has multiple arms as it goes out through the desert there and I did. And I can see one, another crossing about a k and a half and about 4 k's in the distance I can just see a huge body of water. So it's not really worth, if it's just this one crossing we get us all across and keep going but I think we're just going to do the detour, it's too risky with all the vehicles, all the gear, taking these multiple crossings and then getting way out there and it's just some impassable lake anyway. So I'll do the smart thing, do the detour. I think it's about, a f it's a few hours around, but that's all right. It was about a 40 minute-ish drive, it was all pretty easy going, just followed sort of a dirt track all the way up here and we made it through to the other crossing which is quite a nice rocky bottom. We're cruising along here now, beautiful, it's so cool. Out in the desert here and it's super green, just having an awesome river out here, not expected I'll tell you that. So we'll get across then we'll find a spot, pull up and have some lunch. Make sure you bring your fly nets to the desert. They're not actually too bad out here, but especially with the kids, they've all got fly nets on, otherwise just getting hounded by flies. Just so got a fly bodysuit. Pulled up on this river though. Enjoy it, have some lunch for a little while. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, out in the middle of Australia in a dense desert and there's a huge river out here. So we're doing it end of August, end of winter. The Simpson Desert only opened up it was probably four or five weeks ago now because they had huge rains all through the start of the winter and this whole place was flooded. So that's why this is all left over from the flooding. And that's why we had to come all the way up to this bypass to get around it where it's shallow and rocky. Normally when the river's not huge flowing like this, you just straight across down where we originally were mucking around there. I'm gonna just swim that and cool off. Finished up lunch and a swim at Air Creek there, and we're continuing on this bypass. We've come off the creek, followed west for a bit, and then they're hooked south again. So now we're heading back down towards the main line, where we'll turn right and continue along the main line. We didn't actually calculate fuel for that bypass, so we'll see how we go. We hopefully still have enough fuel to get us to the other end. None of us have ever done this desert crossing before, so it's all new. We obviously researched online as best we could and asked around other people. I, I'll pop up on the screen now a little bit of a fuel chart I made. So that's how much each of us has tank, and then how many jerry cans each of us have. 
and then what that would allow us to use per 100 kilometers maximum for the 500-ish kilometer crossing. But with this detour, it's now probably about a 560 kilometer crossing. 500 kilometers, no fuel, no water, no nothing out here. This is very remote. This is out in the middle of Outback Australia, a remote desert crossing. You have to be prepared. <laughs> so we got lots of fuel, water, spares, food. Sean and Nick are both mechanics, so they're quite skilled to fix anything that we have, uh, any problems that we have, which hopefully we don't. the desert east to west and the east are all much steeper the western sides are pretty much like a gentle slope down them you can see why they say the east to west is the harder crossing and the west to east is the easier crossing but yeah honestly even all the dunes we have to go up none of them are really a drama at all even with the trailer I've had minimal dramas they just get a bit wombat holy but you just pick the right gear and use the locker and most of them you can still drive up reasonably controlled without having to bounce things. It's coming up five o'clock, but it's still quite hot out here, so I'd say we'll still keep driving for a little while yet, till that sun gets a bit low and the horizon cools down, the flies reduce. Good first day, not sick of it yet. We've crossed, uh, I don't know, 150 juice probably so far, and about 950 more to go. Yeah, and no, I'm, I'm keen to sort of start pulling up in the next 10 minutes, so we'll go that K or two and um, yeah, pull out there, it looks any good, or if not, we'll just keep our eye for the first thing after. Yeah, I don't know how it works, but there's a circle on the map, and then a little line, and then just off to the left. So it might just be off to the left somewhere. Yeah, radio, right, yeah, just give me a call out when we're a few hundred metres from it, I'll keep an eye out. It's about six o'clock. I think sunset's about 6.30, so good time to pull up. It's starting to cool down now. It's not boiling hot and hopefully not too many flies come in. There's still a few around, but they'll disappear as the sun goes down. Nice spot we got here. Good first day in the desert. We'll start setting up. Nearly set up. That sun's just disappeared over that dune there. So the kids have got a swag each. Drifter Stockton swags there. Demi and I and Zephyr got the OP2. We're just finishing setting it all up. And the boys have got the fire going over here. What do you think of the first day out in the Simpson Desert? Red and beautiful and green and beautiful and good in itself. All the colours. Pretty pretty good out here at sunset. It was a great sunset today. Next morning there's camp. I'm gonna walk up that dune up there, catch the sunrise. But Coming up seven o'clock now. A little bit buffed, 
made it to the top of this dune. The sun is just starting to come out over there. There's our camp. What an incredible place. Just out here in the middle of Australia. Nothing but dunes and a little bit of vegetation. Every direction as far as you can see. So cool and so peaceful. Listen to that. That was a thing to tick off the bucket list, sunrise from the top of a dune in the Simpson Desert in the middle of Australia. Now we'll sit around and enjoy camp for a while. It's about the first or hour after sunrise, hour and a half, that's really nice. The heat hasn't started coming in yet, there's no flies around. 28th of August today, so we're crossing the Simpson Desert the last few days of winter and winter seems to have ended early this, early this year. The days are pretty hot, it's about 30 degrees during the day. But it does mean the nights are really nice, so you're just in shorts, t-shirt, maybe a jumper around the campfire every night and it's beautiful because back in the middle of winter when it's cold, it's like absolutely freezing out here every night, ice. It's just after 8.30 in the morning and we're off. Day two in the Simpson Desert. Plenty of dunes ahead. Our first place of destination to get to today is Papel's Corner, the corner of South Australia and Northern Territory in Queensland. This one's pretty soft at the top, caught me out there. Need a bit of second gear high, I'm up and clear. Just get the odd one here and there, it's a little bit tricky. Now in regards to towing a trailer across the Simpson Desert, it is, it is a bit of a hot topic. I'm sure people get upset that I towed a trailer across the desert. So it's not illegal, you're allowed to do it, but it's highly recommended against doing it when you fill out the paperwork. So you do, it costs us $191 I believe it was per vehicle to get the permits to cross the Simpson Desert. But yeah, they all, a lot of stuff recommending not to take a trailer just because a lot of extra stress on vehicle equipment trying to drag the whole thing through the sands. I've seen a few people do it, spoke to them about it. Most people said like it's not too bad if you've got some experience and know what you're doing. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind, be prepared for. I wouldn't just tow a trailer across without thinking about it. Like have a good think about what you're going to be doing. And west to east is the easier way to do it. Where I was to go in the hard way end with a trailer. But yeah, it hasn't really been too much of a drama so far. Like, no, a couple, of, you know, there's a few dunes I've had to have a couple of goes at, but most of them just sort of cruised up and pretty easy, and no like recoveries or winches or anything like that. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Hot topic: be cautious about bringing trailers out here. I've seen one other car with a trailer so far. A little, little behind the scenes camera car action. Yeah, roller, rollers, mate. Oh, see if we can get some. Day two on the camera for a shorty, man.
Looks like we're only about 300 metres from the Northern Territory border. Sign or no sign you reckon? There might be no sign because according to my map we're literally um, right on the Northern Territory border now. Yeah, that's what my map says sir. <sighs> First time ever in the Northern Territory. And then it looks like there's a big salt lake up here too. We cross over for like a K and a half. Might be good, a few good rollers on that. Yeah, surely. We cross that salt lake there and then we're gonna follow the edge of it down to where Propel's Corner is, the corner of the three states. We'll pull up there and check it out. But this is cool, the first big salt lake we come to out here in the desert. And now we're in South Australia. I don't think I've ever been in South Australia and I haven't been Northern Territory, so in the space of 30 minutes, I've been to two states I've never been to before. If a dingo lives out here and gets sick of one state, he can just jump the border to the other. <laughs> it's almost got the feel like you're going down to Rivermouth down here, but I doubt if that's going to happen. Those tyres don't seem to mind it too much, Gary. She was working a bit in the top there. Yeah, she was digging a little bit, but it looked like those tyres were holding on good, mate. Yeah, it was good, it was holding good. You can't go wrong with them in seat tyres. Yeah, good years. Them Dura tracks, not bad at all. Couple of stickers there. Too bad I didn't bring my Tyler Thompson stickers prime location. There's where we are, we started Birdsville, along there, up around that Air Creek bypass, through there, doom doom, and now we got all along that line over to Dalhousie Springs. Propel's Corner, Queensland, Northern Territory, South Australia, the border of three, all in one spot, pretty cool. Jeffy's in order state. Which state are you going to crack her in? All three mate. All the... Smack me in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. Sure. Alright. You want me to show you how to do it? Yeah, let's right, go. Mountain, mate. Ooh. What? I'm gonna watch. Where should I have a sit first? Northern Territory. Oh, on. Northern Territory, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one? What's the next oh, one? South Australian, now, mate. <laughs> Queensland, Queensland. Oh, come around. Oh. Tastes any better or not? It's nice. Yeah, now give her, give her a shot, fat shot. That's cool, man. I was saying before, I've never been to South Australia, I don't think, or Northern Territory. Have now. I've been to two states yeah. in one day. That's Papel's Corner done. I'm gonna hang here for a little while, have some lunch, and then we'll keep heading west. The track now continues through South Australia. Northern Territory is only just above it, so we're sort of heading along the top of the South Australian border. A couple of flies around. Before we head off, we're just gonna chuck some of our fuel in. Get all these ones off Demi's roof. So she has two petrol and two diesel. Two diesel in my car obviously and two petrol in her car. We only needed two Jerry's for this thing because even though it uses a huge amount of fuel it has 185 litre capacity but we just brought some extra because I think it would have been a bit of a squeeze using just the 185 in this juice guzzling thing. I got these before I left though. That's also a spare tyre for the trailer. The trailer has two spare tyres, treads. But yeah I got these before I left. They're front runner, so they come in the front, they're an accessory to the front runner roof rack. Front runner have heaps of cool obsessions with them. 
but yeah they're like mounting plates and brackets and everything for them so it makes it easy pretty sturdy hold your fuel up on your roof I have no real good need. The cars have both got plenty of fuel now. We're off. It's nice to be back in the car, aircon and away from the flies. Let's get in back into the desert. So there are multiple ways through the Simpson Desert. We're doing the shortest, most common, most direct way through, which is the QAA line and the French line. But yeah, there's quite a few options. The Madigan line is another very popular one. For that you gotta pay. New tires are smoking it up. Yeah, I'm raging up the hills. You'll be doing it the easiest out of all of us. A little bit soft that one. Yeah, this daytime, middle of the daytime stuff makes it a bit trickier, doesn't it? Yeah, they're definitely much more difficult than what they were at nine o'clock this morning. Yeah, that was first gear high, so I'll try second gear high, I suppose. Yeah, you get it up on boost in second gear and you'll be sweet. Just did it, eh? Yeah, mate, just up there, I got it. numbers I'll go for this is June 603 looks like a wombat hole tight hard testy one to me Desert icy pole tree. Yeah, the oh, oh, icy pole, mate. Good blow, look at that. Look at that, Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Middle of the desert. Cheers, mate. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Don't forget icy poles if you're in the desert. Oh, you need to stay hydrated. So Demi and I, and the four kids in the two patrols, we're running two big fridges. I actually have them both. So I got got 95 liter in the Opus. And I think mine in the back's a 75 liter and half of the opus they're running as a freezer so we got some frozen meals and meats and icy poles a few treats in there good time in the desert where was 
this demo yesterday. Sleeping. Sleeping. Sleeping while driving, don't, don't condone that. Can't believe she went the bonus line. Bonus line, mate. She went around, she thought for hey, herself. She, she find, day, what is it, day two? What? Day two of the desert, mate. She's, yeah, she, yeah, day she's two. finding herself in she's the She's either finding mate. herself or she's losing herself. Yeah, she might have lost her marbles now, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, might have. Three, what, two kids in the car? Sending her crazy. Three kids in the car. Thirty now, starting to feel the long, hot day out here in the desert. Obviously, in the car you got aircon, we got tinted windows, so it's not too bad. But yeah, she's just a long drive out here, San Juno. Track's been fairly slow going, obviously the whole desert is, but this one maybe a little bit more since lunch. I think we've been averaging about 15 to 20 kilometers an hour, especially with a trailer, it slows you down because you've got that weight pulling the car around, you don't want to drive it too hard. There's Papel's Corner, 75 kilometers. We had lunch there, pulled up just after 11, I think maybe left about 12.30. I think it's just after five now, so we had one little stop for about ten minutes, but yeah, a solid four, four and a half hours driving to get 75 kilometres. There's not much to this part of the desert, like it's all just the same low-lying shrub and uh, bindies everywhere. Yeah, me and Sean literally just saying that. We have it like it was pretty cool at the start, and now it's just same, 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 same. Yeah, you're start, I'm starting to feel it a bit at this point. Like after two days in the car and the, the sun, and you're just sort of yeah looking at the same thing for hours now. Well, maybe we'll see like uh, some sort of animals, kangaroo, dingo, emu, but I suppose it doesn't pretty harsh. It's making me feel slightly toxic going up and down. Keep an eye out for a camp soon, I reckon that'll give us about 45 minutes and an hour to set up and get settled before the sun goes down and we can sit around and enjoy the sunset. I'm looking at a potential spot down the end of this paddock on the left. Looks like a fair bit of dirt there, I'll check it out. the car. <laughs> we made it to camp. We made it to camp. Pretty happy about that mate. Just after 5.30 and yeah we've pulled up at camp. We're all pretty worn out. Big day. Big day in the desert. We did. How many kilometers did we do in the end? 140 or something? 539. So 139 kilometers today. It was a fairly big day. How have you enjoyed your two days in the desert? I've enjoyed it a lot besides this lingering sickness. Demi's still recovering from a little sickness. Well, a little big, sickness. big sickness. <laughs> That's why she hasn't been on camera much, because she can't talk. What are you putting in, one or two jerry cans? I'm just putting in two, so we've still got one. Yeah, okay. I reckon it's going to be very close for me making it out the other end <laughs> with the fuel I have. 
I've been burning through. I've been doing about, yeah, 35, 40 litres per 100. Yeah, and I calculated for 38, but then we had that detour. But obviously I knew that Dad and Bert, I'd probably have a spare jerry can each. So I was kind of relying on that. If I was on my own, I'd say I would have brought more. Colours out here just absolutely incredible. Sunset in the desert. What a beautiful place. Fire's going. Moon's up there. How nice are the colours and the sunset out here? It's a beautiful sunset. You can see it off the top of that sand dune. I went up there and just slowly going down and then disappeared in the desert hills. What's for dinner? Mate, what's for dinner, Bruno, mate? What isn't for dinner? We've got nachos here. Nachos. Mate, Quick little. With a burrito mix in yeah, there? Yeah, we didn't have nacho mix, so we used burrito mix. Mate, that's my favourite Mexican. Bit, bit of guac, mate. Oh, beautiful. Already in the With a bit of hand sanitizer. Spice it up a bit. Beautiful. Look at that, mate. Mate, look at this thing up here. That's a nice looking palace yeah, yeah, you got up yeah. there. Yeah, a little drifter. That was a hand me down. Little drifter stock, and it's not bad. Drift the stock and rift top ten. Had a couple of hail dents on it. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Some some It was like one of those scratch and dent specials, it was a good deal. Good <laughs> yeah. deal. One of those ones that fell off the roof too, I heard. Yeah, Fraser that one fell off the roof on Fraser it's Island. It's been everywhere now, Simpson Desert, Cape York, Fraser Island, mate, you name it, it's been there. It's been a few places. It's been everywhere. We just had the upgraded model. So that's my old rooftop tent the Birdo's got, taking it through the Simpson now. They charged me six grand for it and then I found out they only cost three. <laughs> <laughs> The flies are building up quick, so we're gonna... It's only just after eight. I was saying, do you reckon we change time zones coming into South Australia? Yeah, it's gonna be, because I swear sunrise was different time on my phone this morning. Quick look on the map here. That's where we started Birdsville, obviously day one out here across Air Creek. Up there's Propel's Corner. And then we've worked out where about there. So we made it from Propel's Corner to there. And then from where we're camped, there's the Simpson Desert border up there. And that's where Pony Bore is just after the border. Then you got Dalhousie Springs. So we're not sure where we're going to make it to today. We're definitely thinking we make it up around the border at least, maybe Pony Bore. See how we're going. We'll get through to Dalhousie, but I reckon we'll be camped up somewhere around here tonight, Dalhousie in the morning. And then there's Mount Dare up there, and then we'll continue up into Alice up here. Day three in the Simpson Desert. Let's go. driving I'm doing is in high range, four wheel drive, I'm not really using low at all. Cruising along in first and second gear high. And then if the dunes look smoothish, I'll just sort of cruise up them in second gear high. If they look chewed out and wombat holy, I'll normally knock it back to first, chuck the lockers in and cruise up them in first gear twin locked. And then if I get caught out, first gear twin locked. I'll go second gear twin locked with a bit of momentum and that's been able to get me up everything. That's the general game plan. We seem to be making a bit better speed and ground in this section of the desert this morning. Maybe more of like a 25-30 km hour average compared to yesterday Arvo which was 15-20 km average. Yeah, we seem to be doing uh, heaps better, that's for sure. This is the speed I've been cruising at. It's nicer on this side too. Bernie Boar's going to be coming up quick. Yeah, look, I won't complain about that. A 
it's 12.40, lunch on the go today. No one's that keen to pull up in the 32 degree desert heat with a billion feet. What's everyone having for lunch? I'm having stale croissants. Stale croissants, not bad, eh? Got for lunch, Sean? What we got for lunch? Moosley bars, mate, Moosley bars. We've got some natural valley. We've got some bloody protein, mate. Now we're just crawling up some sand dunes, second gear. One hand on the muesli bar, one hand on the muesli bar on the wheel. The movement. Seatbelts are on, mate. Everything's safe. Sounds secure. Would recommend. Would recommend. Tyler's got stale croissants, I think. Yeah. These are much better. There's definitely a balance with the acceleration there for me with this trailer. Like, if I sort of just cruise through them at a nice pace with minimal acceleration just keep that tiny bit going it seems to float across whereas if I start trying to put my foot down to get any power it just digs It, but you can feel like you'd, the next day, if you're not doing much, you'd be nearly missing the desert. It's just some high appeal about this part of the world. About 30 k's from the border now, the end of the Simpson Desert. Uh, the rig road, one of the other lines, just came onto the track, and it seems we've gone to like a dirt ish road now over the dunes. <laughs> like, just a Sand, sand slash dirt, but very compact. Like I'm just cruising along here at 40 kilometers an hour, no issues at all. So yeah, we might be traveling along a little bit faster now. Where we've hit this harder dirt, but that sign back there, it said 300 kilometers back to Birdsville. So that's how far we've done, we're on day three. And the first, it's like 30 or 40 kilometers out of Birdsville, I think about 30 out to Big Red. So it's about 270 kilometers there of actual like, proper sand driving through the desert and with that Air Creek bypass that was about that 60 60 extra but that wasn't really soft sand that was more just up one side of the river along the dirt across the river back down the other side so yeah when you're calculating fuel use you don't have to really calculate soft sand the whole way we've made it we've made it to the, to the end of the Simpson Desert boundary side literally it's a long drive Piece of cake, mate. Long drive, piece of cake. Mate, she's loving it. Mate, she's loving it. Easy. Temps, Easy ne temps never hit 90. Oh, they did hit 90, but not above 95, mate. Not above 90, mate. Just. Aircon blaring in the desert. Mate, cold. 32 degree days. Oh, here we hot, go. Hot, hot, hot. We mate. got the man himself. We got it's the man warm. himself. What's he doing? What's, What's he, he doing? doing? Oh. oh. Kid check, kid check. Kid check. Zeph's blowing up. Oh, oh, he's, Look, he's, no. he's coming. Oh, he's coming. Oh, oh, oh he's coming. Oh, oh, he's got Zeph. Oh, kid's not having it. Kid not having it. Too hot for the kids. Too many flies for the kids. He said, brother. It's a trip of a lifetime, oh, buddy. Oh, 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 here he goes. Sheesh, he's mate. On he's the off. Trot. On the trot. We made it. We're out of the Simpson Desert. I think it's about two o'clock. See if we can't get up to Perny Ball. That was Perny Boar. We didn't hang around too long, but stopped and had a check out there. Just comes out of the ground in a spout, boiling hot. You can't touch or anything, and they do have a shower and a toilet there. It'll be a little bit of a camp spot. Heaps of bird life, which is cool. Nice little area, but yeah, we just got bombarded by flies and still very hot. Three o'clock in the afternoon, so we're like, all right, jump back in the cars and keep going. And the plan now, I think it's about 
90 kilometers to Dalhousie Springs. So the plan is to head towards them. You going swimming, Zef? We have made it to Dalhousie Springs. I think it's just after five. So it's just like a big pool, pond in the outback here in the paddock. How do you like the springs? Yeah. It's, it's hot and nice and... Hot. hot. Lots of hot. Still nice after three days in the desert. Yeah. The wind picked up pretty hectic <laughs> during the night last night, so we just survived the morning, packed up camp. There's dust blowing around here everywhere. The desert in Outback is quite a harsh place. Mozzies came in really bad here last night too, which is, there's heaps of warnings for the mozzies at this place, and yeah, they really turned it on. You do have to be conscious of dingoes here. We had oh, two or three getting around our camp last night at bedtime. And you're not allowed fires here either, which is a bit of a shame, but I understand why, because obviously they're trying to protect people pulling what little wood is out of the bush in this area. There's the toilets and cold shower facilities. We washed up there. And then they got some information about the desert and that here, things going on at the moment. Good little spot to stay. But yeah, I think it's about 10, 10.30 now. We're going to jump in the cars and we're going to make the drive to Mount Dare, which is kind of the final part of the Simpson Desert Run. So I'll film a bit on the way there and when we get there and then that'll be the end of this episode. Actually, before we take off, I might see how Dad's new Goodyear Duratrax are going. Bit of an initial tyre review. Tyres have been working brilliantly in the desert. Had no problems whatsoever, full grip, crawling up over all the sand hills. It's been great. So first review on the new Goodyear Duratrax, you happy with them, good tyre? Yep, yeah, they're taken to the sand like nothing else. Doesn't seem to be any chips or anything on them from like all the No, rough we did roads. some shaley country yesterday, that red shaley country like you get out in the New South Wales back corners and um, known country that'll take it to tyres and there was no problems at all with any of that. Yeah, it seemed to hold up really nicely. Yeah, yeah, there's not a visible mark on it. We made it to Mount Dare Hotel. Simpson Desert Crossing complete. Yay! Fuel station to fuel station. No one ran out, which is good. So we will stock up on fuel here. Have a bit of a check out this little place. It's just a hotel, fuel station. You can camp here. And then we'll keep going. We're heading north to Alice Springs, but I'll finish up this episode here, the Simpson Desert Run, the first episode of our Central Australia trip. And I suppose in the end of towing through the desert, I definitely learnt more as I went on, but like that's just tyre pressures right down twin locked 35 uh, inch tyre vehicle, like very capable vehicle. You know, if you haven't had much experience or your vehicle isn't that capable, I probably wouldn't recommend it or come the other way where the sand dunes aren't as steep. There's where we are, Mount Dare Homestead. And there's Alice. We just gotta choose what way we're gonna go. Up through Fink or up through the bins track. Simpson Desert. 
celebration. Drinks, burgers. I got a kangaroo burger. You got a kangaroo burger? Yeah, mate. I'm still waiting for my kangaroo burger. I got a jolly burger. <laughs> <laughs> Little Simpson Desert lunch celebration. I'll give it a bite. Kangaroo burger from Mount Air. That's a good one. I think you should have a bite of that in three states. Mm. <laughs> what are we thinking? What are we thinking about? How's the flavours for your meal? Mate, tastes good, tastes good. You can barely even tell That's the kangaroo. That's the second kangaroo. best thing you've ate all week. <laughs> Just filling up all the trucks at the moment with fuel. So unleaded is 320 per litre. I think diesel was like 355 or something. Diesel's pretty expensive. Obviously unleaded is pretty expensive too. I just did some quick calculations after we got fuel. I'll pop it up on the screen. So for Birdo, we allowed for 28 litres per 100. He ended up doing 19.83. Dad, we allowed for 22 litres per 100, and he ended up doing 13.66 litres per 100. He used 82 litres, but he used 119 litres. The GQ towing used 164 litres, or 27.33 litres per 100, with allowed 36. And the GU used 149, or 24.83 litres per 100, and we'd allowed for 40 litres per 100. So the GU was not towing and it only used two and a half litres less per hundred than the GQ. <laughs> so those TV48s are pretty thirsty. No major dramas, cause you, it's only 270 or whatever we worked out there was actual sand driving. Like there's dirt, 30 kilometres at Birdsville dirt and then there's a heap at this end that's just dirt. But yeah, there's a few vehicles for you if you are towing across the same way we, not towing, driving across the same way we did. Bit of a rough idea for you. And I reckon I could have used less if I was a bit softer on some of those early dunes, wasn't flooring it as much. I was also talking to the guys here who do the recoveries, just out of curiosity. Uh, he said they charge $6 per kilometre to take the mog out, and then 105 per person. They sometimes take one, sometimes take two people, depending on the situation. So it can get pretty expensive. He said, for example, they had to get a Navara recently out of the middle of the desert with a blown turbo, and they had to take two people because he didn't want to stay with his car, he wanted to keep going with the group and it cost nearly 16 grand to get it from the middle of Simpson Desert up to Alice Springs. So big bills. So yeah, just keep in mind, very remote out there. Be prepared. He also said one of the most common things they see go wrong with cars out there is auto gearboxes cooking. People not driving them accordingly and them just cooking themselves to death out there and the heat and the soft sand revving and roaring everywhere. So if you've got an auto, be careful with it. Help, we are stranded and Tyler doesn't know what he's doing. Roller. Rollers. Oh, see if we can get some. Day two on the camera. <laughs> Tyler's in the car next to it. He's doing these cutting shapes. He's cutting shapes, <laughs> mate. He must have a good song on. Yeah, he's got a good song. He's doing he's these ones. Kai looks like he's driving in there. Yeah. Party. No, Kai's a DJ, bro. He's got the headphones on. <laughs> Not hot. TD the world, mate. TD the world. Seems to be the man. 80 degrees. 80 degrees, no. Not that I'll TD the world in my car, but you know. You should. No. No, it's better. <laughs> Who won that race, huh? Who won the race? You, Daddy, did not I, win I the race. I don't participate in any sort of races. It's on private property. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got smoked. Eastern Creek, mate. Eastern Creek Raceway, we're going to do a loop. We're going to do a loop here, go back and get Tyler's little capital. 